mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Hey, how I tell you, Washington East. This is Brother Fahim Tecumseh El Bade, filling in for Dr. Lean tonight. All right, he's at a meeting, so he won't have time to uh, to do the blog talk show tonight, so I'm filling in for him again. And so uh, I hope you enjoy the lecture tonight. Uh, it'll be about Moors, the Circle 7, and the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. And I'm also made delve in little, little little religion here, like the Bible or the Quran, and to give uh, I tried my best to give people a more better understanding of these subjects. Um, a lot of people uh, uh, think there's some or one thing, and they're not. And there's something else, and so I'm here to clear up a lot of confusion about uh, the Circle 7, the Korean Gospel of Jesus of Christ, the book, the two books that uh, most Moors usually read and but need to study, but don't, okay? Uh, I'm dealing with current events. I know a lot of you heard about the uh, the crisis that went on earlier today in, in Virginia of uh, about maybe six people getting shot, uh, I don't know the uh, one person that's on critical condition. That is the senator, uh, representative. Uh, uh, I believe his name is Scalisi, and uh, they say he's critical, critical but stable. So that could go either way. But let's hope and not send, uh, send uh, some of our energies his way. You know, because I know a lot of us we don't wish anybody to get shot or killed. So that's not what we teach. So I'm going to go on ahead with the lecture tonight, for the topic tonight, and start discussing this. All right? Okay. Let me read from the Circle 7 here. Start from the Circle 7. Start from the cover of the Circle 7. It says here, The Holy Koran of the Moore Science Temple of America divinely prepared by the noble prophet Ru Ali. It says here, divinely prepared by the noble uh, noble prophet Ru Ali. That meaning has been prepared. That means he did not really write this book. For those that uh, believe that he did and have the misunderstanding that he did or understanding or overstanding that he did, he did not. He divinely pre- prepared it. He took excerpts and other stories and other uh, uh, lectures and other uh, paragraphs from other books to compile them and prepare them. It's like, it's like you prepare a meal. You know, when you prepare a meal, you want to make a, it's like you want to bake a cake. Okay, you need to have uh, milk, you need to have eggs, you need to have butter. And other and you no know, ingredients to bake a cake. You know he didn't make you didn't make the butter, you didn't make the eggs, you didn't make the uh, uh, the milk. You know so this is what the ingredients you need to bake the cake, and this is what he did with the circle seven. 
He divinely prepared it. Okay, I want to go through here through the first word order book and try to explain a little more about the book, The Circle Seven. Okay, just bear with me here. Okay, it says here. History, his story. It's a, this, uh, this is coming out of the First World Order, Dr. Eileen's book, that I'll be pushing for people to buy and purchase and to be a part of their library. Okay? It says here, history, equal, history equals his story. By the pursuing of the Circle 7 Holy Koran, note, the text is veiled in mythology and allegory. It's very true. It is a metaphysical book, thus not to be taken literally nor historically for the lineage of the Moorish Empire. There actually were and is a Moorish Empire, as the progeny of the Moabite Moab, uh, Tamari, and com- commission in Egyptian words. Mo means water and Ab means heart. That's Moab, which is reference to the heart chakra. Okay? This is a little passage you want to explain about the Holy Quran, Circle 7. Now we want to get into the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Okay? And how to read the book and how to get a better understanding. Okay? I'm going to start with the introduction. Here's the introduction. The full title of this book is The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. The Aquarian Age is dealing with the Aquarian Age that came after the age of Pisces. Okay, the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. The Christ of the Piscean Age. And the critical reader is apt to ask a number of pertinent questions concerning it. Among the many anticipated questions, these are perhaps the most important. They have seven, one of the most important questions. One, what is an age? Two, what is the Piscean age? Three, what is the Aquarian age? Four, what is meant by the Christ, as the word is used in this book? Five, what relationship existed between Jesus of Nazareth and the Christ? Six, who is Levi, the transcriber of this book? Seven, what are the Acacian records? One, okay, what is an age? Okay, I'm going to read this off to you. Astronomers tell us that our sun and his family of planets revolve around a central sun, which is millions of miles distant and that it requires something less than 26,000 years to make one revolution. Okay? His orbit is called the Zodiac, which is divided into 12 signs, familiar known as Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. It is it, is, it, it requires our solar system a little more than 2,100 years to pass through one of these signs. And this, this sign is the measurement of an age or dissertation. Because of what astronomers call the precession of the equinoxes, the movement of the sun through the signs of the zodiac is in order reverse from, the given, from that given above. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. Okay, you took, it says take 2,100 years for the sun uh, to pass through each one of these uh, constellations of stars. Uh, dealing with uh, the mythical solar figure Hercules, uh, the 12 labels of Hercules, 
They're dealing with the twelve zodiac signs. You're dealing with when some uh, when you see in the movie that Hercules is fighting a scorpion, or when he's fighting a lion, that means he's fighting Leo. He's getting through the uh, he's struggling through the two thousand one hundred years to get through the sign of Leo. The same thing with the sign of Scorpio. The same thing. He's struggling to get through the Scorpio, keep the Scorpion from biting him. But uh, but we know, as I, I said, uh, as I had uh, told you in a previous uh, lec- in a previous lecture on the Blog Talk Show, uh, that uh, during the fall season, when the sun is struggling to get through the sign of Scorpio, okay, when but then the Scorpio winds up biting the sun. But well, we know that uh, Scorpio has, uh, if you've seen um, a bite or how a scorpion uh, bite is or how it looks, it looks like a pair of human lips. That's why it became the kiss of death. When the Scorpio kissed the sun, it gave the sun the kiss of death. Therefore, the sun's fall toward, um, from October all the way toward November and December. He kissed, he kissed the sun. He killed the sun. So the sun dies and falls. That's where the, the the season, the fall season, the word fall comes from. You know, uh, most people think that it uh, comes from the fall of the leaves falling from the trees. No. That's where it came. It's, 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 it's astronomical. It comes from cosmology. So the sun falls toward winter. Well, winter represents death because winter is cold and crisp. You know, it gets dark early and even in the evening in the late fall and winter days. So it represents death. So the sun fell to its death. It all deals with astronomy, even your religions. The Bible is full of cosmological science, full of it. The Bible, the Holy Quran the Muslims read of Islam, the same thing. It deals with cos- uh, cosmological science. The same thing with the Circle 7, Holy Quran. Most uh, Moors in the Moors science temples, they read the book, but they don't re- really uh, have an understanding what the book is really all about. So they're uh, most of the time they they're not able to teach its members in the proper way and how to uh, uh, and how to give lectures on the Holy Quran, Sacred Seven. This is the big problem in the church. They tell you what scriptures to read in church. You don't just get up and just read a scripture. No, they tell you what scriptures to read and study. That deals with also with mind control. Okay, let me move on here. Exact time of beginning of an age. Regarding this matter, there is a disagreement among astronomers, but in this introduction, we are not called upon to give the reasons of the various investigators for their opinions. There are enough well-authenticated facts for our present purposes. It is conceded by all critical students that the sun entered the zodiacal sign Taurus in the days of our historic Adam, when the Taurian when the Taurian age began. Abraham lived not from the beginning of the Aries of the Aries age when the sun entered the sign Aries. About the time of the rise of the Roman Empire, the sun entered the sign Pisces, the fishes, and the Piscean age began so that the early in this age, Jesus of Nazareth lived. If you notice, um, you see a lot of Christians with cars with fishes, with the fish sign on their cars or on their um, license plates, you know, but they have no idea. Uh, what the fish actually rep- or rep- represents or symbolic of. It is symbolic. It represents the Pisces age. 
If you notice, you see a lot of the Pope's headdress of the Pope of Rome. Uh, their head is, 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 is shaped like a fish. The headdress is shaped like a fish. Just take a real good look at it. It's it, it, it shaped like a fish, like they took the fish and set it up top, of, uh, set it straight up, and set it up top of their heads. It's the, it's the head of the design of a fish. But the Pisces age has ended already. At the end of the Mayan calendar, some say uh, we have a little more to the, the, the 2020 for the Pisces age to end. It, it, it depends who you want to believe and who uh, you are listening to and what you are studying. Okay, let me move along here. What is the Pisces age? The question further the question requires further consideration. The Pisces age is identical with the Christian dispensation. The word Pisces means fish. The sign is known as a water sign, and the Pisces age has been distinctly the age of the fish and its elements, water. In the established in the establishment of their great institutions, John the Harbinger, Harbinger and Jesus both introduced the rite of water baptism, which has been used in some form in all of all of the so called Christian churches and cults even to the present time. You hear you hear what I hear had that here you hear hear what I said? Let me say it again. Which has been used something in some form in all the so called Christian churches and cults even to the present time. So called Christian churches. When you're dealing with cults, all cult is is a culture. It comes from culture. You know, a cult that means hidden science. It means hidden science of hidden culture. That's all it means. So let's let's not some of the you no know, let let some of the people get spooked out. Okay, so let me go on. Water is the most, I mean, water is the true symbol of purification. Jesus himself said to Harbinger before he was baptized, all the men must be washed, symbolic of cleansing of the soul. Okay, uh, uh, fish was a Christian symbol. In the early centuries of the Christian dispensation, the fish was everywhere used as a symbol. In his remarkable book, Christian Iconography, Didron says, the fish, in the opinion of an antiquarians, generally is the symbol of Jesus Christ. The fish is sculptured upon a number of Christian monuments, and some particularly upon the ancient sarcophagi. It is also upon metals bearing the name of our Savior, and also upon engraved stones, cameos, and antologists. The fish is also to be remarked upon the amulets worn suspended from the necks by children and upon ancient glasses and sculptured lamps. <coughs> okay. Now, it, here, here you have, uh, they're saying the fish, okay, like Jesus Christ. Okay, how many people, Jesus Christ, I know there are a lot of people out there that probably still be, believe that he is the Son of God. He is uh, that if there was a Jesus Christ. But let me ask you: Did you know that English did not wasn't around at that time? So how was his name? Was Jesus Christ? Christ meaning being lifted or being anointed with oil. Jesus comes from the word Jesus. Also from the word of Zeus, which was a Greek solar god, a Greek uh, mythical figure, a mythical solar figure. Same thing with Jesus Christ as a mythical solar figure. This is why in front of the uh, cover of the book, you, you see a figure that's supposed to be Jesus with a halo on the back of his head. That's supposed to be the sun. It's telling you that he's a solar mythical figure. Not a real personage, or not a real person. Now, 
Okay, let me move along here. Baptismal fronts are more particularly ornamented with the fish. The fish is constantly exhibited, placed upon a dish in the middle of the table at the Last Supper, among the loaves, knives, and cups used at the, at the banquet. In the writings of Tertullian, we find this statement. We are little fishes in Christ, our great fish. The last 2,000 years comprising the Pison Age has certainly been one of water, and the many use, uses of that element have been in fat and emphasized, and sea and lake and river navigation has been brought to a high degree of efficiency. It says here, three, what is Quarian Age? The human race is today standing upon the cusp of the Pison Aquarian Ages. Aquarius is an air sign, and all the new age is already noted by rem remarkable inventions for the use of air, electricity, mag magnetism, etc. Even navigate the air as fish to, to the sea and send their thoughts spinning around the world with the speed of lightning. Now, those of you that have seen the movie, um, this movie, what this little boy, he was the, uh, uh, have, have, he was supposed to control all the elements of the universe. I forget the name of the movie. I can't think of it right now. But first he went to the both of the young girls because he wanted to gain mastery of water. Water is also feminine. So therefore he had to go to them to ask, to ask them to teach him how he can master over that element. And they taught him. That was symbolic. I can't think of the name of that movie. It's called The Last Something, but I can't think of it quite well. Uh, uh, the Last Airbender, I believe the name of the, of the movie. But he already had control. Uh, people were coming out of the ground, out of the earth, control over the earth. Then they had to fire, fight fire. They had war with fire. Earth, air, fire, water. They're dealing with the four elements. Okay, the word Aquarius is derived from the Latin word aqua, means water. Aquarius is, however, the water barrier and symbol of the sign, which is the eleventh sign of the zodiac, is a man carrying in his right hand a pitcher of water. Jesus referred to the beginning of the Aquarian age in these words, and then the man who, who bears the pitcher will walk forth the cross, on the, ark of, on the ark of heaven, the sign and signer of the Son of Man will stand forth. Guy, the wise will then lift up their heads and know that the redemption of the earth is near. The Aquarian age is preeminently a spiritual age and the spiritual side of the great lessons that Jesus gave to the world may now be comprehended by multitudes of people, for the many are now coming into an advanced stage of spiritual consciousness. So with much propriety, this book is called The Aquarian or Spiritual Gospel of Jesus the Christ. You notice they say the Christ, Jesus the Christ. They're saying that, that, that because that is a title, not actually a name. It's not a name, it's, it's a title. Dealing with the mythical solo, so the solar mythical figure, Jesus. As I say to you again, uh, these were solar mythical figures. Some were lunar mythical figures. Some were mystical figures. What I mean by stellar, I mean uh, uh, the people of the stars. What I mean by lunar, moon people, or uh, 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 lunar mythical figures, or uh, lunar gods, or stellar gods. I hope a lot of people get this, what I'm saying.
What is meant by the Christ? As the word is used in this book, the word Christ is derived from the Greek word Christos and means anointed. It is identical with the Hebrew word Messiah. The word the word Christ per se or Christ per se does not refer to any particular person. Every anointed person is Christed or Christed or Christed. And that is true. You know, when you when you uh, have I have certain uh, conversations with people and certain people that are uh, said they're not, they don't deal with the church and they don't deal with the Christian or, that, or they don't deal with that Christian stuff. I don't deal with Christianity. But what don't, then they don't say, well, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have no, no Jesus or Christ within me. I said, yes, everybody, everybody can have the Christ within or can attain the Christ within themselves. That is the higher self that you're dealing with. When you're anointed to Christhood, it doesn't have anything to do with you being a Muslim, Muslim, uh, so-called Jew, I mean, Jew or Jewish, or so-called Hebrew, Israelite, Buddhist, Catholic, or whatnot. It doesn't have anything to do with what religion you're affiliated with. It doesn't have anything to do with you being uh, non-religious. Or what they call um, not, uh, agnostic. It is it's the self. It's the, it's the self that you are dealing with. It's with your higher self that you are dealing with. Because everybody can attain uh, the Christ consciousness. That's the level that you can attain when you, when you're dealing with with your, your own spirituality. And your higher, and what your higher self. That's that's what they are talking about. They're not talking about that you, you being a Christian. It's, no, it's not about that. It's about attaining uh, the Christ consciousness within you. Because we all can attain the Christ, uh, the Christhood within all of us. We all can attain that. It doesn't have anything to do with what you believe in or what you do not believe in. I hope, like I say again, I hope people are getting what I am talking about. And if there's some of you out there understand very well what I'm talking about, there's some of you who understand, stand, uh, and and very well understand more than you no know, than I do than what I'm talking about. I'm sure there is. I'm sure you're out there. Just listening, uh, just listening tonight to this program. Okay, one the definite article that that D is placed before the word Christ, a definite personality is indicated. Listen very well. Let me read this again. When the definite article D is placed before the word D T H E D is placed before the word Christ is Christ a definite personality is indicated and this personality is none other than a member of the Trinity, the Son who had a glory with the Father, Mother, before the world are formed. It was the Father, Mother, and Son, the Trinity. But in later times, they have replaced the Mother with the Holy Ghost. So they wanted to wipe any influence from the matriarch, any any, any matriarchal matriarchal influence. They wanted to be all patriarchal, which it is not. It is matriarchal and not patriarchal. Those who do not go along with that, all I can say is, well, you'll be all right. I don't worry about it. According to the teachings of all ancient masters, this son is love. So the Christ is love, and love is God, since God is love. Another remarkable manuscript found in Levi's 
Akashic, Akashic portfolio give, gives the uh, clearest possible idea of the Christ or love of God. It is presumed that this manuscript is a direct transcription from the Akashic records. It is important demands its reproduction here in full. I'm not going to read all of this, all of this because it's too, too long. It'll take up too much time this night. So I, I mean tonight, so I'm just going to read parts of it. It says here, to every world and star and moons, it's dealing with the star, stellar mysteries, the moon, lunar mysteries, and the sun, solar mysteries. I'm breaking this down to you. Okay? To every world and star and moon and sun, a master spirit of this love divine was sent, and all were full anointed with the with the oil of helpfulness with helpfulness, and each became a Christ. <coughs> Another passage. It became him for whom all things and by whom all are all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. It says in Hebrew 2, paragraph 10. It says here, what relationship exists between Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth and the Christ? I'll read this again. I mean, uh, Read this question to you again. What relationship existed between Jesus of Nazareth and the Christ? Orthodox Christians, ecclesiastics, tell us that Jesus of Nazareth and Christ were one. That this, that, the, that the true name of this remarkable person was Jesus Christ. They tell us that this man of Galilee was the very eternal God, clothed in flesh of man, that men might see his glory. Of course, this doctrine is wholly at variance with the teachings of Jesus himself and of his apostles. The Aquarian masters and council have formulated an answer to this question, and so well covers all the information required that we give it in full. Here's one. <clears throat> okay. Here's one paragraph. Here. The word Christ means the anointed one, and then it is an official title. It means the master of love. When we say Jesus the Christ, we refer to the man and to his office, and to his office that he holds. It's like when you're in the military, you see a lieutenant or a captain, those of you have been in the military, you, you you know what I'm talking about. If say if you were a non commissioned officer and he approaches you, you salute his rank, not him. You salute the rank that he holds or that she holds and not the woman or the man. It's the rank that they hold that you respect, not them. This here, I'm gonna read this again. The word Christ means the anointed one, and then it is an uh, it is an official title. It means the master of love. It is a title. When we say Jesus the Christ, we refer to the man and to his office, just as we do when we say Edward the king or Lincoln the president. Edward was not always king, and Lincoln was not always president, and Jesus was not always Christ. Anybody understand what I just said? Okay, I'll move along. Jesus won his Christship by a strenuous life, and in the Aquarian Gospel, chapter 55, we have a record of the events of his Christing or Christing or receiving the degree of Christ. Here is where he was coronated by the highest earth authorities as the Christ King, properly speaking, the master of love. And after this was done, he entered, a, a, entered at once upon his Jude, Judean and Galilean ministry. Okay, he said he received the degree of Christ. It is a degree. 
he received the Christ degree. It is a degree. It is a level of spiritual consciousness that you attain as we, as we all walk through life in our daily lives every day. That's what all this is pertaining to. And this is where we all should be. Instead of all this chaos and madness and all this murders, especially of our own Asiatic sisters and brothers, which makes the murdering police look like Boy Scouts in comparison to the way we are murdering each other. But if we have this going on, if we, if we have if we have, have the Christhood within us, very little or uh, uh, nothing or uh, not any of that would be going on. I wouldn't be on this blog talk show talking this evening. Wouldn't wouldn't be no need for it. Okay. We recognize the fact that Jesus was man and that Christ was God. So that in very that in very true Jesus the Christ was the God man of the ages, meaning that he had the God within himself. Because a lot of us uh we still making the big mistake of looking outside of ourselves instead of the God within. Instead of the Christ within, we always looking outside of ourselves for an answer, looking for things, looking for something to believe in. But it is yourself that you should believe in, believe in yourself. When we look for the, uh, for the devil, we always looking for something or a spiritual being outside of ourselves. With the but the devil is our lower self. Both the devil and God are both within us. But we have we have yet to to have control or to have dominion of God over the devil, over the lower self. A lot of that, that is the true struggle, and that is the true Armageddon that they be talking about. But woman and man both struggle within themselves to overcome the lower self and the evil within themselves or within ourselves. That's that. That's one we. Uh, that's that is the true Armageddon between the higher and lower self, when the higher dominates the lower self. Then we will come into true Christ consciousness and to true Christhood. Now remember, this is not a Christian lecture I'm giving. This is not a church lecture I'm giving. This is not a gospel lecture I'm giving. We have to remember that. Most of your Christians in your churches don't even have this. Don't practice it. Did it strike you as odd that all over the Union States, in every corner, we have churches in, our, in the Asiatic neighborhoods? Well, then explain to me why is there so much strife why is there so much murder, robbery, assaults, rape, any kind of foul activity you can think of that goes in our neighborhoods? Something is very, very, very wrong. Shouldn't it?
Okay, let me move along here. Okay. We recognize the fact that Jesus... Okay, I'm going to read this over again. We recognize that the fact that Jesus was man and that, that, that Christ was God. So, that in very much Jesus the Christ was the God-man of the ages. It says here, the Nazarene testimony. Jesus himself made the matter clear. Once, when he was speaking to a congregation... And Bethany, Bethany means a fig of wood, so that's what Bethany means, a house of figs. That's what the word Bethany means. Okay, and Bethany, the people called him king, and he stood forth and said, I am not sent, I'm not, I'm not sent to sit upon a throne to rule as Caesar rules, and you may tell the ruler of the Jews that I am not a claimant for the his throne. Men call me Jesus, and God has recognized the name, but Christ is not a man. Christ is universal, love, and love is king. This Jesus is but man, who has been fitted by temptations, overcome <clears throat> by trials, multiform to, to be the temple through which the Christ can manifest to men. Then here you men of Israel, here, look not upon the flesh, it is not king. Look to the Christ within who shall be formed in every one of you, as he is formed in me. What did I tell you before? Hmm? This is what they're talking about. This is the true understanding of what they call esoteric Christianity. Because, see, you're not just being a Muslim in the Moors Divine National Movement. I'm speaking to those in the Moors Divine National Movement now. You're not just being a Muslim in the Moors Divine National Movement. You're also being an esoteric Christian, Muslim Jew, Buddhist, etc., etc., etc. It tells you in the in the more science temples of America Incorporated, when you enter the temple and when you uh, proclaim your nationality in these temples, they tell you to walk down toward the corridor or the aisle to meet the Grand Sheik and shake his hand, and the, and the secretary will issue you a nationality card. On the back of the card, it has that we should give homage to all these sciences, to Jesus, Buddha, Jesus, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, you know, all these uh, Confucius, even. Because all of these as our science. All of this is Moorish science. The Aquarian gospel of Jesus the Christ is Moorish science. Not just the circle seven. Holy Quran just circle seven. This is all Moorish science. This is the kind of what you call occult Christianity, which is not in your churches, not only across the Union States, but all over the world. It's not taught. Because people have not never been given real Christianity. People have not really, that's why he said the so-called church, when I read to you early, early in the book, the so-called church, because people, people really don't go to church. They've never been, been to church. They've never been taught Christianity in its purest form. Christianity, they've been taught as watered down. They've given a watered down Christianity.
a lot of uh, dealing with a lot of cosmology, astrology, astronomy, metaphysics. Like I told you before, dealing with a lot of solar mythical figures uh, there in the Bible, lunar mythical figures, stellar mythical figures. Like, give you an example, like King, like we said, King Solomon had a thousand wives. They weren't talking about, this is an allegory. This is, this is symbolic. This is astro-theology. Because that's all it is, astro-theology. This is the astro, astro-theological meaning of Solomon and his thousand wives. Solomon represents a sample that represents the sun. He is a solar mythical figure. He has soul, S-O-L, meaning the sun rises in the east. You have uh, OM, O-M. That means the sun is at its highest meridian in the, in, at noon. On, that means in the evening. The sun rises in the east, and it sets at its high meridian in the noontime, and it sets in the west. East, south, west. But actually, it is the earth that is traveling around the sun to make the sun appear that the sun is moving. The sun doesn't move. Actually, the sun doesn't move anywhere. It is the earth and the moon that does the traveling around the sun. The earth travels around the sun 12 times. The moon travels around the, uh, the, the, the sun 13 times. Thirteen and twelve equals the five. Two and five is seven. They circle. They circle. There, you you have the circle seven. It brings you back to the Holy Quran of the more science uh, temple and the more uh, temple of science of the world. The circle seven. So you have to study this. You have to study the science of this. And we have to learn how to break it down to a science. Because that's all it is. It is a science. It is Moorish science. It's the science of the Moors. It's, it's an our science. The science is even in your deck of cards. How many books in a deck of cards? Four. The deck of cards, uh, the four books in the deck of cards represents the four seasons of the year. How many cards that's in the book of God, uh, in the in, in the book of cards, in the deck of cards? How many cards? Fifty-two cards in the deck of cards. Fifty-two. Five and two is seven. So there are fifty-two weeks in the year. Therefore, you complete the full cycle or full circle. Five and two is circle. You have the, again. You have the circle seven. That is Moorish science. When you play with a deck of cards, I don't care if it's Trump or whatever. Whatever game you playing, you're dealing with Moorish science. That's Moorish science whether you know it or not. Okay, let me move along there. I hope a lot of you get that when I'm uh, when I'm tr- trying to uh, tell you. Okay, I'm gonna read I'm gonna read some of these paragraphs over again. Okay. Men call me Christ and God has recognized the name but Christ is not a man. Christ is universal love, and love is king. This Jesus is but man, who has been fitted by temptations, overcome by trials of multiforms, to be 
the temple through which the Christ can manifest to man because we are our own temples. The temple is also within us. Okay, let me move on here. Then hear, you men of Israel, hear, look not upon the flesh, it is not king, but look to, to the Christ, within, within who shall be formed in every one of you, as he is formed in me. When you have purified your hearts by faith, the king will enter in, and you will see his face. And it says, says, surely this question has been answered. Jesus was man. Christ was divine love. That's what what they mean by God, divine love. The love of God. And after 30 years of strenuous life, the man had made his body fit to be the temple of the holy breath, which is spirit. The holy breath. And love took full possession, and John well said when he declared, and the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right. It says, and after 30 years of strenuous life, the man has made his body fit to be the temple of the body of breath and love, took full possession. See, when everybody talking about 30 years, they're talking about uh, <clears throat> there are 30 degrees between each zodiacal constellation of stars. There are 30 degrees between each of the 12 zodiacal constellation of stars. That's where the months get its 30 days from. That's the where uh, <clears throat> June gets 30 days uh, from, 30 days. April gets 30 days. That's where the 30 days come from. So the Romans start messing with the calendar years. Now you have January, March, and the other months have 31 days. Because it was 360 days, but now it's 365, 366 during leap years. All of this deals with astrotheology and cosmology. All of this cosmology, astrotheology, and all of this is Moorish science. Believe it or not. Ripley's believe it or not. Let me move along here. Who was Levi? The describer of this book regarding the person personality of Levi, we are committed to write but little. Suffice to say that he is an American citizen, mm, whatever, and he has been a close student to the religions of the world from childhood. When but a boy, he was impressed with the sensitiveness of the finer ethers, that means energy, and believed that in some manner they were synthesized plates on which sounds, even thoughts, were recorded with avidity. He entered into the deeper studies of etheric vibration, determined to solve the great mysteries of the heavens for himself. Forty years he spent in study and silent meditation, and then he found himself in the stage of spiritual consciousness that permitted him to enter the domain of these superfine ethers, energies, and become familiar with their mysteries. He then learned that the, the, the imaginings of his boyhood days were founded upon veritable facts and that every thought of every living thing is there recorded 
in this man in this manuscript entitled The Cusp of the Ages, a part of which we have reproduced in this introduction. We find the following copy of the commission and when Levi received from Vesel, the goddess of wisdom, or the holy breath, which is the spirit. Okay, I'm going to read part of this. It says here, Twelve times in every revolution of the sun, this Christed love of God is made full, manifest in the flesh upon the plains of earth. And you may read in Acacia the worship or the uh, the wondrous lessons that these crises have taught to men. Hear what he said? These crises have taught to men. These crises, C H R I S T S. He's speaking of one, of uh, 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 more than one Christ. Because what they are telling you, they were several men and women that attained Christhood. And when they attained this Christhood, they had taught to other people so they can do the same for themselves. And this is the way things are supposed to be. This is the way they're supposed to teach the people in these churches and in the mosque and in the synagogues as well. Because this is not pertaining to one religion or to one, what they call, so-called belief. A person asks me, uh, what is your religion? I say, Islam. Oh, so you uh, you believe in Islam? I said, no, I don't. I know Islam. So Islam is your religion? I said, no. Islam is the nature of me and the nature of every Asiatic woman and man on the earth. Or uh, 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 I can rephrase this, uh, every Asiatic man, woman, and child on earth. Those of you that's listening tonight, know I know that you're getting this. Those are some of you are. But there are some of you that may be having a hard time grasping on what I'm talking about. So please bear with me. I usually don't uh, uh, teach these uh, subjects. I usually don't. I usually teach on nationality and birthright principles and social political issues dealing with nationality and birthright principles. So I'm just kind of uh, teach on something a little, little different tonight. Okay. Now Levi. Okay, so now Levi, message bearer, bearer of the spirit age, take up your pen and write, write full the story of the Christ, who built upon the soul, I mean upon the solid rock of yonder circle of the sun, the Christ whom men have known as Enoch, the initiate. Write of his words as prophet, priest, and seer. Write of his life of purity and love and how he changed his carnal flesh to flesh divine without descending or without descending through without descending through the gates of death. Because you don't have to do that. You can have uh, some uh, 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 some type of spiritual death and resurrect in a divine spiritual resur- or have a divine spiritual resurrection. This is what they're talking about. You are resurrected from the lower self or lower spiritual self to the higher spiritual self to a higher level of spiritual consciousness, which is the Christ consciousness, which is the Christ within. There's Maybe there are some uh, church members are listening to this tonight also. And maybe some of this you want to take back to your preachers or to your church. 
but I am to warn you. The preachers might not want to hear it. But they know that they, that that you found out that they have been lying to you and that they have been misteaching you and misleading you. And they have to find a new job for themselves, not working so good now uh, for the mind control system now that they have out here in, the, in these church institutions or what uh, as I should say, mind control institutions. This is all these churches and all these rest of, all the rest of these religions are all about. They are about mind control. They're not being they're not about being spiritual. They want followers. And they're working for their masters to keep you all in the church, mosque, synagogue, cathedrals dumb down. Because a lot of you Muslims or Muslims and these masses have not been taught, have not been truly taught, have not been truly taught real Islam. Okay, let me move along. I know I'm stepping on some toes here, but I don't give a damn. When it comes to the truth, I don't apologize for that. Let me move along here. I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this. Say, right of his works as prophet, priest, and seer. Right of his life of purity and love, and how he changed his carnal flesh to flesh, divine without descending through the gates of death. And you may write the story of Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, this Christ who lived when Abraham lived, and pointed out to men the way of life through sacrifice, who gave his life of a willing sacrifice for men. And you may write the story of the Prince of Peace, the Christ who came as babe in Bethlehem, meaning house of, house of comfort, Bethlehem, and travel every day of life that man must tread. He was despised, rejected, and abused, was spit upon, was crucified, was buried in a tomb, but he revived and rose a conqueror over death that he might show the possibilities of man. He means that he rose from his lower self. He was reborn into his higher self. The same thing with uh, Jesus, uh, the Jesus story in the Bibles. The same thing. If you study the the ancient mysteries of Egypt, of Mizraim, or Hekupta, whatever you want to call Egypt, you know, uh, you give a better understanding if you study astro theology. I suggest you read the book uh, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World by Gerald Massey, book one and book two. And also I suggest you read a book of the beginnings, book one and book two, also by Gerald Massey. These uh, two two volume books will be in, also be in your library for every serious student. I want to get a clear and true understanding of certain teachings of Islam, of your Islam, of your Christianity, of your Judaism, or, or Buddhism, whatever, or whatnot. Okay. He was despised, rejected, and abused. And, well, I'm afraid that already. I'm sorry. A thousand times he said to men, I came to show you the possibilities of man. What I have done, all men may do. And what I am, all men shall be. These stories of the Christ will be enough, for they contain 
in the true philosophy of life, of death and of the re- resurrection of the dead. They show the spiritual journey of the soul unto the man of earth and God are one forevermore. That, that, that's you. Talk about some spiritual being in the clouds. Some spiritual European in the clouds. We're talking about you, the God, your higher self. And your lower self will be one. Where your higher self is in dominant and, and in control of the lower self. Your higher self has won the war over your lower self. Therefore, you become one. Okay. About 2,000 years ago, Elihu, Elihu was conducted. I, 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 who conducted a school of the prophets in Zoan? Egypt referred to Levi thus. This age will comprehend but little of the books of purity and love, but not a word is lost. For in the book of God a remembrance, a registry is made of every thought and word and deed. And when the world, when the world is ready to receive, lo, God will send a message, a messenger, or he will send a messenger to open the book and copy from the sacred pages of all the messages of purity and love. Then every man of earth will read the words of life in the land, language of the native land, and men will see the light. For man again will be at one with God. Okay. What are the Akashic records? Akashic is a Sanskrit word and means primary substance and thus out of which it all things are formed. Also, Sanskrit also means Sanskrit. Remember, we we are dealing with astrotheology here and cosmology. We are dealing with this is what we are dealing with. It says here, man. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? The question is asked. This was the earnest question of David, the Hebrew psalmist, and the eighth psalm is given wholly to the con- contemplation of man, the crown work of manifest creation, among many great lessons that Levi has been permitted to gather from the Akashic records of the universal mind. We found one on man, and with his descent into physical matter, and his final ascent into an eternal oneness with God is so graphically described that it certainly merits a place in the introduction, and we will give it in full. Okay. I'll give you some passages here. I have a few passages in chapter 7 of the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. It says in, in uh, paragraph 15, or verse 15, A mighty work is theirs, for carnal men want not the light. They love the dark, and when the light shines in the dark, they comprehend it not. Now, where do you hear that from? Where did you hear this? Comp- where did you hear this paraphrase? This sounds very, very familiar, doesn't it? These are some of the works that the prophet has compiled and prepared for us to read in the Circle Seven. These, the the Korean Gospel of Jesus the Christ, is, is nothing but more than science. All the Holy Prophet was doing was gathering all the works 
from their glory and God for Jesus the Christ, and to thee I grant a, a book that has been by the Rosicrucians and all other works. He has gathered all these, which is our science. They stole it from us. They took it from us. We must take it back. And this all what the prophet Noble Drew Ali has done. This is the understanding that a lot of us in the movement have to understand. How in the hell Prophet Noble Drew Ali going to take or uh, steal anything, something that's already his or that's, uh, uh, that belongs to us in the first damn place? Okay. Verse 16, we call these sons revealers of the light, but they must have the light before they can reveal the light. And you must teach your sons and set their souls on fire with love and holy zeal and make them conscious of their missions to the sons of men. Teach them that God and man were one. What did I tell you earlier? And that's what I told you earlier. I hope a lot of you getting it out there. Okay? But that through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from God, debased himself. And that's what's happening. This is what's been going on around the world today with ourselves, with our sisters and brothers. Teach that the holy breath would make them one again, restoring harmony and peace. That is the spirit, the holy breath. One brother told me that he's never been spiritual. Told me that, that showed me and that told me he didn't know under, or understand what spirituality really is. You think it's something that you uh, just bow down and pray and go to church or the mosque or the synagogue, whatever, worship, that's being spiritual. That is not being spiritual. Okay? Here we go. Again, Elihu met his pupils in the sacred grove and said, No man lives unto himself, but every living thing is bound by cords and every other living thing. But blessed are the pure in heart. They will love and not demand love in return. Which is, and this is me saying this, which is uh, what you call um uh, or you can say unrestricted love, but it's out. There's something called something else. It's called uh, love without conditions, conditional love. I'm going to read this again. Blessed are the pure in, in heart, for they, for they will love and not, uh, not demand love in return. That is what you call un. Conditional love. Because that is the best love there is. Believe it or not. Whether you want to accept it or not. That is the unconditional love is the best love there is. Sisters and brothers. They will not do to other men what they will not have other men do unto them. There are two selves. The higher and the lower self. The higher self is human spirit, clothed with soul, made in the form of God. The lower self, the carnal self, the body of desires, is, it is a reflection of the higher self, distorted by, mur mur by murky ethers of the flesh. The lower self is an illusion and, and will pass away. The higher self is God in man. And will not pass away. Where did you where did you read this at? 
Does it sound like the 101? Hmm? Does it sound like the 101s in our teachings, in our lectures? But this is the information that the Holy Prophet had gathered and got back for us to teach and teach ourselves and teach among ourselves, bringing our sciences back to us, bringing our Moorish science back to us. Come on up. All right, let me move along here. I'm going to read this again. The lower self is an illusion and will pass away. The higher self is God and man and will not pass away. The higher self is the embodiment of truth. The lower self is truth reversed, and so is falsehood manifest. The higher self is justice, mercy, love, and right. The lower self is what the higher self is not. Justice, that is, I'm going to stop right here. Okay, the higher self is justice. That is Jesus. Jesus is justice. When they say they hang Jesus on the cross, justice was hanged upon the cross. And Christ anointed, or oil anointed, Cristo or Crisco, where you get Crisco oil from. They are all one. God and man are both one. I hope, I hope, I hope people are understanding this. Well, what I'm trying to say to them tonight, I really do. Okay. The lower self breeds hatred, slander, lewdness, murders, theft, and everything that harms. The higher self is mother of the virtues and the harmonies of life. The one-on-ones, the one-on-ones, sisters and brothers, our science, the prophet had took all this and brought it back to us, put it in the circle seven, the one-on-ones and the one-on-twos. That's all he done. Let me continue on. The lower self is rich in promises, but poor in blessedness and peace. It offers pleasure, joy, and satisfying gains, but gives unrest and misery and death. It gives men apples that are lovely to the eye and pleasant to the smell. Their cores are full of bitterness and gall. If you would ask me what to study, I would say study yourselves. Hmm. This is the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Hmm? Hmm? What did I tell you earlier about the uh, the nationality card, what they give you in the more science temples of American Incorporated? To say study all of these subjects. Jesus, Muhammad, Sufism, Taoism, Confucianism, because all of these subjects you will find our science in them. I'm telling you this, I'm, I'm saying to you this night. If, and, if, and if you want to uh, learn more about our science, please, if you can find the book, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, by Alephas Levi. Name is Alephas Levi. The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Those of you that like to study, read, and comprehend things. It will give you an overall understanding of our science, of our moral science, the overall understanding of the esoteric Christianity and other religious religions. Believe me. All 
right, move it along here. If you would ask me what to study, I will say study yourselves. And when you well had studied them, and then would ask me what to study next, I would reply, yourself. Ha-ho! <laughs> huh? Let me move along here. He who knows well his lower self knows the illusions of the world, knows the feelings that passes pass away, and he who knows his higher self knows God, knows well the things that can, that cannot pass away. Thrice blessed is the man who has made purity and love his very own. He has been trans he has been ransomed from the perils of the lower self and he is himself his higher self. Men that seek salvation from an evil that they deem a living monster of the netherworld, and they have gods that are but demons in disguise, all powerful yet full of jealousy and hate and lust, whose very favor must be bought with costly sacrifice of fruits and of the lives of birds and animals and humankind. And yet these gods, these gods possess no no ears to hear, no eyes to see, no heart to sympathize, no power to save. <laughs> those of you that study, those those sisters and brothers that, uh, that those, those of you you that do a lot of studying, you know what I'm talking about. You probably know what I'm talking about better than I do. Hell, you probably can teach me. Who knows? Okay. The evil is a myth, and these gods are made of air and clothed with shadows of a thought. The only devil from which men must be redeemed is self, the lower self. If man would find his devil, he must look within his name is self. If man would find his savior, he must look within I'm going to say this again. For a lot of the people that are always looking outside of themselves for answers. And I'm here to tell you the answer is yourself. Real answer. Ourselves. Not some spirit outside of ourselves. <clears throat> it is within us. Each and one of us. I'm going to read this again. If man will find his Savior, he must look within. And when the demon self has been dethroned, the Savior love will be exalted to the throne of power. It says here that David of the light is purity, who slays the strong Goliath of the dark and seats of the Savior love upon the throne. Hmm? So there we have it. Just like those of you who know the solar mythical figure of Samson in the Bible, in the biblical scriptures, it says that he beat down 10,000 or 1,000, I can't remember, uh, Philistines, which were Moors. And he beat him down. That was symbolic. That was an allegory. They, they wasn't talking about he beat down a thousand people with a, a, with, a jaw, with an ox, with a jaw of an ox. That wasn't what they were talking about. That means he talked down his lower nature a thousand times. And able to talk down his nature a thousand times, his jaw must be as strong as an ox. Do you get what I'm talking about? So his higher self can overcome his lower self and maintain control of his higher self, which is the spiritual and the Christ within.
Okay. Let me move along here. And it says here in this one paragraph, it said, Then let us study God, the one, the three, the seven. Before the worlds were formed, all things were one, just spirit, universal breath. Mm. So this is what we all need to do. It says you study, study yourselves, and the more you get the understanding of the self, and the more answers you get within yourself. It says here, and if our people will not hear the voice of God, lo, nations from afar will come and sack Jerusalem, the place of peace, okay, and test our temple down, and tear our temple down, I'm sorry, and take our people captives into foreign lands. But this will not forever be thought. They be scattered far and wide and wander here and there among the nations of the earth like sheep that have no shepherd guide because during the trade, during the slave trade, I'm stop right here. During the Atlantic slave trade, a lot of our people were taken from here, from the Americas, and then taken to Europe, and then to Africa. It was the other way around. Not from Africa to here. Talking about. I'm gonna read it again. And if our people will not hear the voice of God, low nations from afar will come and sack Jerusalem. Jerusalem means a place of peace. And tear out and tear our temple down, our bodies, and take our people captive into foreign lands. But this will not forever be, though. Be, though. They be scattered far and wide and wander here and there among the nations of the earth like sheep that have no shepherd guide. The time will come when God will bring again the captive host for Israel shall return and dwell in peace. And after many years, our temple will be built again and one whom God will honor, one in whom the pure in heart delights will come and glorify the house of God and reign in righteousness. All right. They're uh, dealing with a lot of these. Uh, there are different books. Uh, I suggest y'all to read also the book. Uh, uh, and you know I'm going to push the book, The First World Order, by Dr. Sir Alim El Bay. You know, he still, I mean, he's uh, still got books in supply. You know, you can get the book uh, Morris and Masonry. Morris and Masonry by Brother Abdullah El Talib Mosi Bay. Also a good, powerful book that I recommend for your library. And also, uh, if you ever run upon a book called um, The Wisdom of the Knowing Ones. The Wisdom of the Knowing Ones means Gnosticism, the key to esoteric Christianity. Another good, uh, good book by Manly P. Hall. If you want to get you to understand Christ, Christ, Christianity a lot better, okay. Three wise men from the north were in Peropolis, 
and they were Casper, Zara, and Melzone. And Casper was the wisest master of the Magian land. These three were at the home of Or, Or, Loon, and Mer. Well, when Jesus came. For seven days, these seven men spoke not. They sat in silence in the council hall and closed communion with the silent brotherhood. Hmm. This is a very good book. A lot of people say, oh, the prophet, he stole that. He stole that from the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. No, he didn't. He got it back. And, and he got it back for his people to study and read so they can better study themselves and understanding themselves. Or I can say, so we can study ourselves and better understanding ourselves, who we are and what our mission is on this earth. Okay. I cannot reap except I sow, uh, except I sow. And I must reap what I sow. The, the law of all eternities is known to masterminds. Whatever men do unto other men, the judge and executioner will do to them. We do not note the execution of this law among the sons of men. We note the weak, dishonored, trampled on, and slain by those men called the strong. We know we note that the men with wood-like heads are seated in the chairs of state, are kings and judges, senators and priests, while men with giant intellects are scavengers about the streets. We note that women with a moiety of common sense and not a wit of any other kind are, are painted up and dressed as queens, become the ladies of the courts, to puppet kings, because they have the form of something beautiful, while God, God's own daughters are their slaves, or serve as common laborers in the field. This is dealing with society, as we know it today. This is what they are talking about. Now I'm going to move on to the book, The Wisdom of the Knowing Ones. Gnosticism, the key of esoteric Christianity. The knowers and their knowledge. Unit comparatively recently few people were familiar with the word Gnostic. A rather larger number was acquainted. With this antonym, agnostic, both are derived from the Greek gnosis, usually translated as knowledge. An agnostic is thus a non-knower, one who denies all knowing of ultimate realities, which, while a gnostic, is one who professes knowledge of such feelings. And this is where a lot of their Christianity has come from. This is where a lot of it comes from. Gnosticism. But at one time, they had killed off all the Gnostic preachers and the Gnostic preachers. Why? Because that, <clears throat> the people will find out that they have been taught a lie. And the church is nothing but a lie. Could not let that keep going on. There is one paragraph I would like to read to you 
um, is dealing with the circle seven. And I'm going to find that page. This is why I was wondering when one time I was in this bookstore and I was a member of the Nation of Islam at the time and the uh the brother owned this bookstore and he was asking me why was a lot of sisters and brothers from the Moorish Zion Temple was looking for the Aquarian gospel of Jesus the Christ. Why were they looking this book? But at that time I was under the teachings of uh Minister uh, Louis Farrakhan. I don't have to say no more. So I told him I didn't know. I don't know why they were looking for. This. I don't know why they were looking for this particular book. Because I did not understand a lot of esoteric, uh, esoteric science at that time. And also, you must remember a lot of these, like the Bible and the Holy Quran, deal with numbers one, three, and seven, or three, five, and seven. Well, some people will say dealing with Masonic numerology, which is nothing more than more science. Because we know that the perfect man is circle, I mean the perfect number for the perfect man is seven. I also had that in my book that I'm uh, recently writing. I have been writing for the last two years, but one of these days I'm going to finish it. And I believe that it will be a book that most of you will like. Okay, let me go. On. Let me move along here. One needs to keep in mind, however, that gnosis is not primarily rational knowledge. It has little to do with philosophical reasoning, and even less is association with much much matters such uh, such as our contemporary computer related. Obsession with access to data. Elaine Pages, author of the splendid work, The Gnostic Gospels, translate the term Gnostic as used by the Gnostics as insight, a term denoting both psychological and metaphysical cognition arise as intuitively. Okay, here we go. Gnosticism, the key to esoteric Christianity. In the first century of the Christian era, the intellectual world was extending its inquiries along the lines set down by the teachings of Plato and Aristotle. Plato had set up the doctrines of causes. His philosophy was devoted to those larger and general truths which may be defined collectively as universals. Though, or through him, the conception of an organized universe was introduced, introduced to Mediterranean civilization. This organization originated in archetypes, that is, grand patterns of ca- and causes. The patterns are formed by the terms and elements of a divine geometry and close the material life within a network of cosmic energies. Hmm. Okay. The Gnostic believe, believed that it was this demurge to whom Jesus referred to when he spoke of the prince of, of the world who had nothing in common with him. The demurge was the personification of matter, the monad, of the material sphere, the seed of the, of the world within which Locke 
the patterns of all generated things. Ladabath gave birth out of himself to six sons who together with their father became the seven planetary spirits. Okay? These were called the seven archons or seven governors and correspond with the guardians of the world described by Hermes, Trismegistus. Their names and order according to origin are as follows. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, the Moon. Latabath was Saturn, Lao was Jupiter, Sibeoth was Mars, Adonis was the Sun, Astaphius was Venus, and Alolus was Mercury, and Arius was the Moon. Here, <clears throat> I'm going to skip this right here. Skip this. Okay, this is dealing with the number seven. Not to say the, the number seven is in the perfect man. The perfect man is seven. That's why I read that to you. Because the number seven is a very, very uh, normal, important uh, symbol or number in all the, the mysteries. And I know why the prophet chose the, uh, the book and called it the circle seven with these four gates. And there's four spaces within the four gates. Within the four gates represents north, east, west, and south, where the word news come from. That's where you get the word news from. North, north, east, west, and south. And you have the four seasons. And you have, the, along the four gates, you have the four gospels in Christianity. You have the four horsemen. And and the and 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 the uh, horsemen of the apocalypse, and in the book of Revelations, and you have the four of uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the four gospels, and the four gates of the circle seven, and within the four gates are the perfect man. Because the perfect man is seven. This is our science. And people dealing with the word the Holy Ghost, but don't really understand the church. Uh, the most of your members in your church don't really understand the word ghost. They think it's some kind of spookism, but it's really not. You know. I can read it to you right here. It says here, the word ghost is is from the German word Geist. In its original form, the term signified a breath or motion of air. Our word, our word Geist, as applied to an agitation of the atmosphere, comes from the same root. The Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is the mover of the substance of the material creation. Thus, we have a basic trinity of will, wisdom, and activity. It's just like you have uh, in, the, in the Gospels, you have uh, Jesus' sister was named Mary. His mother was named Mary. Then you have Mary Madeline. That was the feminine trinity. I deal with the feminine trinity. Things that, you know, are so much to learn about uh, esoteric Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, and Judaism. There's so much to learn. It's like um, an ocean full of ink, and you're trying to write it in one book, and you never would do it. Most of us would die, would die in our lifetime before we even learn anything close. When we even, even touch the surface of all the knowledge that is in the world today. Okay, so I said for lack of organization, the Gnostics presented 
no united front and lack the machinery to rally their forces against any common enemy. At that time, the the rising Christian church was the enemy of all pagan movements. Now, what is a pagan? A pagan is only a person who worships nature. Well, what is nature? Nature is law. Nature is God. You have a lot of paganism in Christianity. All they did was amalgamated a lot of that science into what they call Christianity and called it Christianity. Because I can't recall of any one time in the Bible that Jesus ever referred to himself as a Christian. Or we should go to church or going to church. You ought to hear the word Christianity or Christmas for that matter, which means Christ child or Christ son. At the time, the rising Christian church was the enemy of all pagan movements. It had the advantage of recognizing the importance from a temporal standpoint, at least, of building a solid internal mechanism. The isolated communities were drawn together under under a unified ecclesiastic authority. Excuse me. As a result of this, premeditated program, the church was in a position to impose its will by force, if necessary, upon the scattered and unorganized pagan schools. Gnosticism spread by a process of free growth. It unfolded like a plant, extending according to impulse and with no dogmatic concepts. It was therefore extremely liberal and by constitution non-militant. It suffered from the uncertainties natural to extreme liberalism. The Gnostics have been held responsible for the rapid development of the temporal authority of the Christian church. Read it again. Have been held responsible for the rapid development of the temporal authority of the Christian church. The the anti-Nicene fathers united with they united their resources to, to stamp out the Gnosticism. They had failed the church. They had, or had they failed the church? No, to, to, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. Had they failed, the church would itself had ceased so far as a political authority was concerned. Do you hear what I said? Do you understand what I said? I'm gonna read this again. <clears throat> The anti the anti Nicene fathers united their their resources to stamp out Gnosticism. Had they failed, the church would itself had ceased so far as a political authority was concerned. The early bishops learned the important lesson that a religion that a religion religion must be organized in order to survive as a temporal institution. They learned their lesson so well that organization has been a primary consideration from their time to the present day. It may be reasonable to ask if the church had any real justifications for its program for exterminating the Gnostics. From a broad and personal viewpoint, the action of the fathers cannot be condoned, but according to their own convictions and beliefs, their actions are quite understandable. The Gnostics accepted the Christian concepts of Christ into their own systems and interpreted the Christian mystery by means of their elaborate system of uh, uh, heterodox mythology. Their Christology 
took on the splendor of Asiatic legendary legendary and was involved in elaborate metaphysical imagination. We'll read this again. Their Christology took on the splendor of Asiatic legendary and was involved to elaborate metaphysical imagination. The church fathers felt that heathen philosophers literally had stolen their own most price most priceless possession, the Christ concepts, from them. Worse than this, if anything could be worse, their Christ was being interpreted as to be used against the very church that was that that was created to advance his cause. Such a state of affairs was intolerable and called for heroic measures. This is what happened, and this is what uh, what uh, why they had came to exterminate and execute a lot of Gnostic uh, teachers because it was the truth what the church what should have been teaching them all the time, and this is what they didn't want the people to know. This is what they didn't want the people to know. They want people to know that. That they've been, that they, uh, they have been bamboozled all this time. <clears throat> okay, it's getting late. <clears throat> okay, so I'm trying to get this in. Okay. Said uh, the Guamas and the so called Keys of Solomon probably originated from the Gnostic system. The Gnostics also had some uh, diagrams, some of which have survived, in which the universe itself becomes a great man- mandala symbol. Nearly all of the Gnostic mandalas took the form of two interpreting cycles of orbits, as to the old idea of our solar system. With this planetary orbits were superimposed by another with the outer ring of one at the center of the other, creating a series of overlapping circles. This was the principal emblem of the Gnosis. The Gnosis were emanations, and their philosophy of life was built upon the Mithraic ladder of the Persians and Greek, Homer's cave of the nymphs, and the mysterious symbolic letter that is, is is nearly always shown leaning against the cross of the time of the bringing of the body of Christ down from the cross. This is where the Bible got that from. One day crucified Jesus or, or the Jesus the Christ and the gospel uh and the gospel and the, and the gospels. The latter was a Gnostic symbol and also a symbol of aspiration. The latter in Egypt was tipped so that the top of it pointed toward the constellation of the seven stars. The great bear was the symbol of initiation into the mysteries and of the he- <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Start over again. The great bear was the symbol of initiation into the mysteries and of the heavenly accent of the human soul. This was the letter described in the vision of Jacob in which the angels descended and ascended. Okay, they're getting ready to cut me off, so I'm going to try to get this in here. This was a basic Gnostic concept later to be found in the early writings of the Rosicrucians. The letters symbolizes a pattern of levels of emanations from the divine power. Coming down in waves. And uh, and another like the tides along the shores bringing divine light down into the abyss of matter. Okay? Well, they're getting ready to cut me off now. I hope, I hope I wanted to share more with you, but as as always, uh, 
we have ran out of time. So, uh, well, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, call uh, 314-644-4425, 314-644-4425. And as I say always, Barasamata Konda, which means peace family, and Hawate Washita East. May my spirit and your spirit spring forth with the Jaguar. Peace. I'm out.